Crossroads Media. Friends, family, we are gathered here today to talk more Phillies baseball. Now, I just felt I wanted to break this team down yesterday. For no other reason than I miss talking ball. And I had zero understanding that Dave would be joining the WIP morning show this morning. When I woke up and saw some quotes, I'm like, fuck yeah, baby. I'm fiending for more. You're telling me I get a little back-to-back? All right, I'd make a Drake reference, but I don't know if I want to touch that right now. <laughs> <laughs> if you're unaware, don't search Drake on Twitter. Jesus Christ. Don't know how that just happened. But here we go. Let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. And we have a bunch of audio clips from Dave Dombrowski himself that we'll react to. And I just got to say, man, it is so awesome to hear such a soothing baseball mind in control. It's so obvious why. Everywhere he goes, there's success. He gets it. He's so smart. He's so intelligent. He knows where to allocate the money. He understands when it's time to take risks. He gets how important it is to bring Nola back. He knows the type of player Yamamoto is and said that you'd be damn surprised if you heard the money we put on the table. But sometimes it just comes down to he wanted to be a Dodger. He grew up an LA fan. That's what it is. And you can't get around that no matter what you're selling point is. No matter how electric Citizens Bank Park gets in the month of October, you you can't get that guy off of wanting to be a Dodger. And he was so open and so candid with his answers. Well, why not think about bringing Reese back? Well, we did. We had meetings. We talked about it. But at the end of the day, we feel obligated to look at our defense, even though a lot of guys just want to hear about power and a lot of guys just want to hear about home runs. We need to do some things with this team to sharpen up the defense, and if we can get Kyle Schwarber out of left field, then that is what suits our team best, especially with Bryce now, who we could project as a great defender over at first base, and he's just being honest. It's almost like you're chatting it up with the boys. You're having a couple cold ones. You're thinking about what this Phillies team could be, and Dave's just giving you his opinions and his smarts, and it's so unbelievable considering what three weeks ago we're listening to Howie Roseman try and manipulate all this the, 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 the talking points with the media and they're so afraid and they're so scared of saying too much that they actually have to sit in the room and teach Nick Sirianni what to say get the hell out of here be a damn man go up there and answer the damn questions without being scared of not being prepared Oh, we got to prep. We got to prep. No, just be real. Be real. It's nice to hear someone just be real. Refreshing. Sure like this nice cup of coffee I got. It's the fifth cup of the morning. <laughs> I think I need a sixth. I'm just saying. All right, this is what we're going to do. All right, we have a lot of audio cuts, 12 to be exact. We're going to let them play, and then we're going to give our opinion on what we heard. So we start off on, hey, Dave, do you believe that it's fair to say it's been quiet? And why was it quiet? Here's Dave Dombrowski. Our first real big goal was to get a starting pitcher with Aaron becoming a free agent. Of course, we were fortunate to re-sign him, which is a big signing for us that really stabilized our starting rotation. And when you say, well, why? I think there's a combination of factors. One is we have a good club. Um, That's apparent. There's not gaping holes. And we're also in an opportunity where giving opportunity to some of our young players, which people are not usually very open-minded to or understanding. But we think if we're going to be the organization that we would like to be throughout, that we would we want to give young players an opportunity. I love that answer. And here's why. 
It pretty much describes everything I was saying in our previous pod. This team's good. This team is damn good. And this team can win the World Series as currently constructed. Just because they failed doesn't mean that this team is incapable with all of the talent on the squad to go and do it. They absolutely started to swing at garbage outside of the strike zone. But what happens if they didn't? If they weren't flailing at pitches seven feet off the plate and they started to work great counts and they were able to be that aggressive and that monster and the team that you're afraid to see because anybody in that lineup could take it to fucking Mars. I mean, it just came down to, damn it, I don't know if they were trying to do too much or they put so much pressure on themselves after what happened in Arizona, even though you had a 3-2 series lead with Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler on the mound, if they got into their own head and, you know, the fans coming back home, they they felt obligated to swing out of their shoes, and he even talked about maybe looking at what went wrong and how they can adjust to make sure it doesn't happen again, and we'll get to that momentarily, but man, it's like this roster, why was it so quiet? Because we're great, we're great, there's not that many opportunities to filter in this massive piece We look around the diamond. Bryson Stott, Bryce Harper on that side of the infield. Alec Bohm and Trey Turner on that side of the infield. JT Real Mutos behind the plate. And you got yourself a Kyle Schwarber and Nick Castellanos, right? Brandon Marsh. And yeah, they're high on Rojas. They are high on Rojas. And I don't necessarily love it. Here's what I'm willing to, to give them, though. I'm willing to give them a little bit of time, and here's why. Because they told us that there was once a time when they brought in Brandon Marsh that they saw something in him. And they felt that they had the people in place from a hitting coach perspective that they can change Brandon Marsh. They could get a lot more out of him. And you'd be a fool to think that they didn't. Brandon Marsh is a sensational player in this organization. He's really turned it on. Now, Christian Pache. The Braves' high prospect. Eh, didn't pan out. The Oakland A's, can something happen? Eh, didn't pan out. We see something in him where we feel we could get something out of him. And then there was a time where my man was getting extra base hits, where he was doing way more after looking overmatched. And we screamed, and we were bothered, and we were so disappointed. But then eventually, there was something there. Not not superstar takeover game stuff, but serviceable nine-hole hitter. There's a big difference on what the bar is. There's no such thing as a team that has a nine-hole hitter that's smoking 30 bombs and hitting 290. So if you're asking them to play a role where they are fantastic defensively with just serviceable hitting, and Rojas was not that last season, but I'm giving you examples on when this president of baseball ops stressed to you that we can change it, we can tweak it, we see things that we can work with, give us time, and you will be surprised, and you'll get something that you feel is beneficial to the club. Well, look. Rojas, is he as bad and overmatched as he was in the playoffs? Maybe, maybe, because guess what? When you get to that time of the year, you got to produce. And he's clearly five, six, seven, if not 17 steps behind if we're going to look at last year as what he is now. But they proved that they can get something Out of these kids, out of these guys, out of these struggling hitters. So if you're telling me that in the beginning they are open to allowing them to get at-bats and to work on details that they were implementing into their swings and into their approaches during the offseason, then I'm willing to give them a chance. I'm not saying I love it fully, and maybe I don't think that their ceiling is as high as they feel. But I'm not questioning Dave because I can look at the track record and say that it works. And I do like the idea of a balance. Meaning, 
You do need some internal success. You need to let this thing snowball where you spend a lot of money on your free agents and you re-sign guys that you feel can help you out. You bring back Aaron Nola on a nice contract. You look to extend Zach Wheeler because, damn it, that dude is a dog. That guy is so underrated nationally. He doesn't get the attention he deserves with some of the greatest starting pitching in all of Major League league baseball the guy's a weapon a damn machine I love it I mean I love it there's nothing better than a day where Wheeler takes the bump and he's walking from the dugout while everybody else is jogging to their respected positions on the field here's Zach Wheeler nonchalant little cockiness just walking up to the mound maybe playing around with, with, with something on the mound kicking his feet a little bit right doing one of those looking for a rosin bag throwing it up a little bit a couple of little dips of the cap with a little something under Underneath, whatever, whatever. I know these pitchers are finding ways to do something, damn it. But man, is it not outrageous? I love it. I don't think that there's much for this team to do because they are so insane and they are so deep and they are so capable of making another run. So to put the hands up and go, there's not that much to do. You're right. You're right. And that's honestly the right way to look at it. So, did they learn anything from the loss to to Arizona? Here we go. Let's go, Dave. I will give uh, one thing that ended up taking place, and and we have looked at this over the winter time, is that I give the Diamondbacks credit. Um, They really uh, adjusted, and we chased a lot those last few games are uh, balls out of the strike zone. And I think that's something that we're susceptible to doing, but it's also things you can work on. And so it's been a focus for us in that regard, even in discussing with our hitters over the winter time. And we've got some different thought process and different drills that we'll focus on when we get to spring training to hopefully help us a little bit in that regard. And, Absolutely. Sorry, Joe DeCammer, who was going for another question. I apologize. But ultimately, yeah, I mean, that's what you have to do, right? This isn't the first time we heard from the top people in this club that they have to go back and study what we can do differently. Whether it's Rob Thompson speaking about the lineup, whether it's Rob Thompson looking at the way that he utilizes his starting pitching slash bullpen, because when he went to Alvarado versus Jordan Alvarez a few seasons back, when they were competing for the World Series... Now, I didn't mind it because I remember earlier in the series, it worked out for you. That was your your leverage spot, your high leverage spot. Go to the guy that really is tremendous, and he was a workhorse for you, and he really had an advantage when it was a lefty-lefty. Jordan Alvarez is just not human. Okay, that guy is so flat-out fucking gross that sometimes you just have to tip your cap. But to Rob Thompson's credit and to Dave Dombrowski's credit, it's nonstop working. Every time you hear them kind of a uh, 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 study what happened, we had a bunch of meetings. We talked every day. We were in the rooms. They seem to be going to work nonstop to try and apply the best thing for this organization to finally get that damn trophy. And I love it. I love it. Now, obviously, you want them to be committed and you would expect them to be committed, but I feel they're committed and some. I feel they know how close they are, and they know how rare it is to have this type of group. Bryce Harper, Castellano, Schwarber, Trey, Bowman, Stott, and to a point I never really got to finish was the idea of having an organization where you can go spend your big money, go re-sign some of your assets and maybe extend them, which it's obvious Zach Wheeler will be extended at some point. You you need your stats. You need your bones. You need maybe someone like Rojas who can come in here. Like, you need that stuff to have it flow and to have it make sense and for there to be rhythm. And Dave and Rob, they know what's ahead of them right now. To have this core and that great mix, it's now. It's now. You cannot let this slip. And that's why whatever we can do to study and reassess ourselves to make sure that we don't fall against a team that we are better than. They were so much better than the Diamondbacks. 
It should eat you alive the entire offseason. You should be in meeting rooms for 12 hours a day, if not 16 hours a day. Get some damn Chipotle catered. Maybe you send an intern to Wawa to snag you another fat 24 ounce. Fucking put that thing down and let's go. What now? What next? How can we improve? Non-stop. And they're aware of it. Dave, he's got it all figured out. All right, He's got his hands on the pulse. And I can't tell you the last time that I felt this strong about a president. I think Danny Briere and Keith Jones are doing a tremendous job. I think Daryl Morey is very good as well. And I think Howie Roseman, all things considered, has a lot of great things to his uh, to his background too, right? But man, there's something different. It's just his delivery. It's his poise. It's soothing. It is a soothing baseball man that just understands the game and isn't afraid when it comes to playing games with the media. He just tells you how it is, and it's it's so refreshing because it gives you a different level of calm. Rob Thompson, he doesn't get too high. He doesn't get too low. Sometimes I wish there was a little more personality in there, but the players love him, and I feel that they see a different side of him than we all see. And they get a different pulse from the clubhouse and all. But over 162, baseball is a damn grind. And I think it suits baseball better than other sports to play that even keel type of mindset and all. But it also is a reflection of the people above Rob Thompson in Dave Dombrowski. And I I think that's why they're able to really go through some of these ups and downs throughout the regular season. And by the end of the year, be where they want to be, which is super hot, rolling into the playoffs. Teams are afraid to come into their ballpark. Nobody wants to see the Phillies in October. Does anybody go, yeah, I want that? Unless you're an idiot, right? Unless you're a dope. In what world would you want to play the Phillies on the road and get a taste of that atmosphere? Now, maybe he would like to just because of how fun it would be to hear 45,000 crazy lunatics down your throat. Maybe it would just be fun from an experience standpoint. But when you're sitting around the table, when you're 65, reflecting on your time as a major league player, and you tell your grandkids about your story, say, yeah, man, I'll never forget that time I played in Philly. We lost 9-1, to one and then and then we lost 10-2. to two. But, dude, that place was bonkers. That place was asinine. Yeah, that's exactly how the story story's going to go because you don't want a taste of this. You don't want a taste of this at all. And this team knows even if they start out slow, we'll figure out our groove. We'll get there. I promise. Work with us. I know it's uncomfortable and I know it's unsettling and I know that you guys have been waiting months for the season to finally begin and here we are and then we're not getting our groove. But Dave actually mentioned the slow starts, and the World Baseball Classic, and some of the other things that play into effect on these slow starts. So let's take a listen on how they can fix these issues moving forward. Well, and there's been meetings and uh, phone calls, and uh, Rob Thompson's been on it with our staff and participated in some of those calls. We'll have our meetings, of course, next week when everybody's here in person. But I think that um, we probably just need to be in a position that we're more focused on that, not just getting ready for the season to go from there, maybe turn it up a notch. Last year, there was a lot of things that that happened. So two years ago, a little bit different than I think last year. But last year, when you look at all our participants in the WBC, and I'm a supporter, I think WBC is great, but it didn't help us last year because we had three of our positional players in Schwarber, um, Turner, and JT that just didn't get enough at bats to get ready for the beginning of the season. Um, Harper, of course, wasn't ready. You lose Hoskins right before opening day. Well, that, and you put Derek Hall and he gets hurt. So that's a lot of things to affect in that regard. And it also affected our pitching. Suarez wasn't ready. Tyon Walker wasn't, wasn't quite ready. So, um, I, I think we're in a position where, um, having our players in camp more, getting them more ready ourselves, having that thought process, um, and the folks in that regard will be a way that we can be better prepared to start the season. 
I can co-sign that. I can agree with that. I don't think that that's a flawed way of thinking. Organically, because of no World Baseball Classic, and I don't know what happened the year prior with Joe Girardi. Maybe it's as simple as the team just didn't connect and really believe in what Joe Girardi was selling. So it was hard for them to fully go out there because they weren't bought in. Joe lost the clubhouse. He's he's an older school guy, and he was trying to find that mix and that balance, and it just didn't work for whatever reason. Now Rob's here. And, you know, I, I get it. I do. You get them into your own camp. You get them into your own spring training. And you work them at your pace instead of having to deal with some immigrant stuff with Ranger Suarez not having him here. And then you're also dealing with all guys trying to play for Team USA and around the world. And, you know, it's hard. It's difficult. You want everyone under your own supervision. You want them to be getting the information from your own staff instead of being told three different things, right? You're hearing something from their own agents, you're hearing something from their teams, their teams coaching, and then you're also trying to get information from the Phillies who are distant from you. They're not in your back pocket, right? They're they're in Florida trying to get things going. You're elsewhere. It's very hard. Maybe everyone just being together and you're hearing it all at once and you're hearing it all from the same source. Let's get this season going. Maybe that can help out tremendously. Now, I do have one fear and it does fall short of hypocritical to an earlier statement I've made about about wanting to win a division. But before I tell you there, I need to tell you about what it's like winning in the kitchen. And winning in the kitchen is all because of HelloFresh. And what if I told you that you can get HelloFresh breakfast for life for free. I'm not messing around. Free breakfast for life. Thanks to our friends at HelloFresh. And I gave HelloFresh a shot a little bit about a year ago or so. And it was literally the best decision I've ever made. So if you're contemplating, hey, bro, should I try it? What's it like? Just give it a whirl, give it a shot, and then you'll realize why everybody goes this route. I haven't heard from one family member, from one friend, from one subscriber that they made a mistake by going this route. If you're unfamiliar with HelloFresh, it is farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes that get delivered right to your doorstep. So don't worry about going to the grocery store. You get to skip that. And then home cooking is so much easier, it's fun, and it's affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. They say breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and HelloFresh agrees. In fact, they're giving all subscribers free breakfast for life. That means you enjoy a totally free breakfast item with every single HelloFresh delivery. Now, that's worth waking up early for. This is how you get it. Go to HelloFresh.com slash BroadsFree and use code BroadsFree for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash BroadsFree. It's free with code BRODES free. Make sure you check the link down below in the description. It'll take you right there. Do not be a fool. Come join the HelloFresh family. Okay, what I wanted to say about the hypocritical stuff is this. I've been very, very loud and maybe even obnoxious, some would say, once in a blue moon that happens with me about the idea of wanting to win the division. I, I want to set the tone, and I want the Braves to know you have to look out for the Phillies. We're not playing any games, and we want to start out hot and smoke them. Now, I've seen the Eagles start out hot 10-1, and one, and then they collapse miserably. They couldn't make it to the finish line. Totally different circumstances. I'm just using that as an example because it's fresh in everybody's minds. What I don't want them to do is put such an emphasis on the early starts and getting out so hot that maybe there's so much pressure on them then by July or August it's fatigue it's they're beaten down they don't look right I'll take what we got if the alternative is they're really good in the beginning of the season and then nobody's afraid of the Phillies late in October because they ran out of juice they ran out of gas they don't look very strong and there's not that pop towards the Phillies and what they provide. Now, there is somewhere in between, right? How come we can't have good, sustained success all the way through? Of course, there'll be a four-game losing streak somewhere. Every team has that. Of course, you'll get swept on the road against a team that you're significantly better than. You'll probably have a home stand against some really bad opponents that doesn't go as smooth as possible. That's just the nature of baseball. But I'm just saying, you know, why does it have to be either slow start, hot finish, or hot start, slow finish? Can it be 
good start, hot finish? Why can't it be that? Why can't it be good start, hot finish? Why can't it be good start, good finish? And then as soon as the playoffs come around, they know how to flip that switch back to, all right, it's time to get to the World Series mode because they've had a lot of seasons to gear up for it and sort of know this is what it's like. We've been here now. We get it. Let's let's have at it, right? As soon as the regular season ends, I'm not afraid because I know that they've been in those positions two seasons in a row now. I have faith in them, but I still want it to look like they are a dominating force in September. Have Aaron Nola have another sensational October. Have another fantastic, unbelievable, poised Ranger Suarez when needed. I don't know about Walker. Dave was asked about Walker and his relationship with Rob Thompson because at the end of the year, things got a little ugly on social media and all. And he said, look, the guy just wants to play, right? Pitching, and that's what he does, and it's the biggest time of the year, and, you know, whatever. But they seem like they're in a good pace now. And somebody got angry at me because I said that Taiwan Walker wasn't very good last season. And then they pointed out the wins, and I acknowledge that there were a lot of wins, but didn't we sort of question how the hell that happened through the regular season? It didn't make much sense. We've all watched. If you watched, then you know that Taiwan Walker did not live up to the standards that we set for Taiwan Walker. I don't care about the win total because that doesn't tell enough of a full story. That dude could give up seven earned runs, but the Phillies score eight that night, and he's going to get a win because they scored eight prior to him leaving the baseball game. He did not pitch well. I don't really have to sit up here and debate if Taiwan Walker was good last season. He wasn't good, and if you feel that he was, then I believe that you are just lost, honestly. Just lost. Okay, let's go to Rojas again. We kind of got a little away from Rojas, but there were some things stated about Rojas on the big club right away and, and the defense in general. So let's take a listen to Dave on Rojas and how they feel about him. Likely, yes. Definitively, no. Um, so I think that's uh, the answer would be yes. Uh, Real quick, the beginning of this clip was in reference to him being on the big club to kind of start things off. We saw enough at the last couple of months in August and September um, that we really like what we saw. I've talked to our hitting people um, at length about his progress over the winter time. He's worked extremely hard. He's made adjustments that he needs to make. And not only uh, I'm not saying he's going to come up and hit 300 with 20 home runs right off the bat but I think he can do enough offensively and contribute from an offensive perspective. And when you add his speed in there um, and then his defense, all of a sudden um, he becomes a a real plus for us. So yes, I do think that he will be up, but he has to earn that. We're not going to just give it to him. Love that. Love that. You think we're just handing him a spot? Absolutely not. He applied certain things to his craft in the off season. And if that plays out into fruition, then yeah, there is a chance for Rojas to step in here, but they did change some things with this hitting and that needs to be applied to his game. He needs to actually show that the time and effort he put in is actually working. And if that is the case, then yes. And there were many, 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 many times for many, 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 many seasons where this defense sucked. Reese Hoskins out in left field. I'm a Schwarbsman, but Schwarb out in left field, not great. Nick has improved out in right field, although I do believe there's times where he slides, more so two years ago, and most right fielders get there where he doesn't have to make the spectacular catch. They're just there and in position to get underneath the fly ball, but whatever. I don't care as long as you record the outs. That's the name of the game, and if you see a real legit legitimate good defensive core you had to score eight nine ten runs in the past because you would give up three hours you would give up four runs that were unearned because Odubel Herrera is not taking the proper route on the ball though actually if he doesn't take the proper route on the ball and then the ball ends up hitting the ground without it touching his glove then that pitcher's getting screwed and boned and his ERA is going through the roof so it's actually earned instead of unearned but there's been multiple different times where it's just hitting off the top of people's gloves and screw that. I mean, I think over 162, 
I do believe in really building a strong defense. I hate to relive it, and I always relive it, but do you want to go back to the Houston series and think about McCormick making a catch at the ball? It seems like there's always been that time where you thought someone was coming up with a big hit, the ball's going to right field, and then at the wall, here's a spectacular defensive play. We're going to need that. That helps you advance, and they were missing that key part. We talk about the offense always needing to explode. Well, there might be nights where you only need five runs instead of seven. You may only need three runs. The offense is going to score 10 runs every single clip. So if it's a night where you're only scoring three, but there's two men on, second and third, two outs, and it's a big spot for the other team's best hitter up, and here's Rojas or Brandon Marsh making a stellar, spectacular grab, getting a good jump on the ball, and then in, instead of that scoring multiple runs, it's a, a, a 3-1 game still, and then you're rolling into the ninth with an opportunity to close, you don't need the big surgeons and the nine home runs that night. That, that will be in the play, and I don't downplay that at all. So we'll continue with Dombrowski here speaking about the defense and how important it truly is for this club. We felt, um, and, and no, um, I don't mean this in a negative vein, but we think that one of the other biggest things we need to do was to try to get Kyle out of left field on a regular basis. Um, his knees over the last couple of years, last year he didn't run as well. He catches what he gets to. Uh, he's a good offensive player, but we think that the defense and the speed help us a great deal more. And so when you look at what our our situation is as far as what we think is a better club, we look at it with having the outfield defense in, out there for us with some, of course, contribution from an offensive perspective. Well, if you do that, you move Schwarber to DH, well, putting Bryce at first, there's just not that room for Reese. So that's really what it came down to. And I can understand we debated that ourselves. We had a lot of meetings in that regard. Um, you could also say, well, do you leave Bryce in the outfield? We think it's better at this point to move him to first base. We think he's going to be an outstanding defensive first baseman. And, and I, one thing that's not a – doesn't catch people's eyes that they're really not excited about a great deal, I get it. I mean, I, I love power hitting, right? You love Everybody loves a home run. Defense doesn't get as much attention. But when all of a sudden you put Rojas in the outfield and you put Harper at first base, um, you become a really good defensive uh, ball club compared to the other combination of having uh, Schwarbs and left and, and Reese at first base. I love Dave, man. I love Dave to death. I didn't know how many clips we'd get to. There are a few that I didn't. He was asked about the closer. He basically mentioned closer by committee. He, he looks at a bunch of lefties out of the pen, a bunch of righties out of the pen. And, you know, on any given day, it can sort of be based off of matchups more so than anything else. And that's sort of status quo. I don't have an issue with it. Um, the update on Andrew Painter, they don't seem to be too optimistic for anything this upcoming season, giving him the time to properly kind of go through the proper protocols here to get him back. Uh, he talked about some relievers, concern about Aaron Nola going to the Braves, uh, his preference on the other. There was a lot of good things, man. And uh, I think we got in the, the the nuts and bolts of it all, I guess. Some of the other stuff is a little fun. He, he was asked about the leadoff spot. He chuckled and said, I have my preference. I'll leave that to Rob. He was asked about the... Uh, the dancing on my own, and and just some fun stuff towards the end. Dave's awesome, man. Dave's awesome. I love just listening to him speak, and it was a pleasant surprise for me to wake up and kind of see that this morning because I didn't know where today was going to go. I sort of have a notebook every day and every week, and I try and plan out my shows and my episodes based off of the schedule. Flyers played last night, okay? Am I going to talk about the Flyers? Was there a lot of juice on that really good win in Florida? Not too much. Bang! Dave speaks. Let's go, baby. Oh, little Phillies baseball. I love it. All right, everybody. Thank you all so much. I greatly appreciate all your support. I hope you enjoyed today's show. I love you guys to death. You all know that. I appreciate you. You're the best people on planet Earth. I swear to you. I wouldn't just say that. All right, I can't lie. I'm not allowed. Love you guys to death. I'll see you all in the next one.